Hi everyone, I am Tai Yue Qin, a master's graduate from Nutritional Epidemiology Lab at Seoul National University. It is a great honor for me to present here. The topic of my presentation is the effects of energy intake self-monitoring using a mobile application on anthropometric and metabolite profile changes evaluated by a randomized trial. Obesity prevention is a key issue for good health and well-being. Mobile health applications are useful tools for obesity management, but the weight loss effect of mHealth may differ by gender. In this study, we aim to identify anthropometric and metabolite profiles in response to energy intake self-monitoring using a mobile application compared to a paper-based diary and to examine whether changes varied by gender. To begin with, let me talk about the study design. Participants were randomized into the F group or paper group and instructed to self-monitor energy intake during the 12-week intervention period. Anthropometric and clinical assessments were conducted at pre- and post-intervention and blood samples were used to perform metabolite profiling. Participants who aged 18 to 50 years and had a body mass index higher than 25 were recruited from university community in Seoul, Korea. As a result, a total of 57 participants enrolled in this study. Before randomization, participants diagnosed with diabetes and dyslipidemia at baseline were excluded. They were randomly assigned to the mobile application group or the paper-based diary group in sex-specific strata. Both the investigators and participants were blinded about the randomization sequence until informed consent was received and baseline survey was completed. Participants were instructed to record their foods and supplements using the Noom Coach application or a paper-based diary at least 20 days during the 12-week trial and advised to reduce by 500 kilocalories per day from the estimated energy requirements. All of the assessments were conducted at pre- and post-intervention. Anthropometric and clinical assessments were conducted as follows. Untargeted metabolite profiling was performed using liquid chromatography mass spectrometry. All the analyses except for metabolite profiling were performed according to the intent to treat principle. First, differences in changes between the app group and the paper group were analyzed using independent t-test and recognition link sum test. Next, changes from pre to post intervention within each group were analyzed using parity test and recognition signed link test. All the analyses were performed using SES and p-value less than 0.05 in two-sided tests were defined it as a significant difference. I'd now like to focus on the result of the study. Of the 57 participants enrolled, 54 participants completed the trial. As shown in Table 1, there were no significant differences in baseline characteristics between the two groups, suggesting that randomization was appropriate. Table 2 shows differences in anthropometric and clinical parameters between the two groups by gender. First, the changes in anthropometric parameters were not significantly different between the two groups among either men or women. Body fat mass increased from pre to post intervention in the app group among men but not among women. For clinical parameters, LDL cholesterol level increased from pre to post intervention in the app group among men but not among women. A significant difference in change in triglyceride level was observed between the two groups among women. Triglyceride level increased in the app group but decreased in the paper group among women. 
As shown in Figure 2, the metabolite profiles at pre- and post-intervention show different clusters within the two groups. Acetylcholine decreased to a greater extent from pre- to post-intervention in the F group than the paper group. 1-acyl-SN glycerol-3-phosphocholine and alpha linolenic acid levels significantly increased in the F group. Material glyoxal, s malate and phosphatidylcholine levels significantly decreased in the paper group. When we separated men and women, the metabolite profiles at pre- and post-intervention showed different clusters within the two groups among either men or women. However, there were no significant differences in changes in metabolite intensity between the two groups among either men or women. In conclusion, we found slight increases in body fat mass and LDL cholesterol levels in the F group among men but not among women. Our study observed that triglyceride level increased from pre to post intervention in the F group but decreased in the paper group among women, showing a significant difference between the two groups. Metabolite clusters at pre- and post-intervention differed by gender. However, differences in metabolite profile changes were not statistically significant between men and women. We appreciate the support from following programs. Thank you for your time and attention. Please feel free to contact me if you have any questions.